Is this the future of computers? Well, maybe. Now, I'll be honest, there are plenty of reasons to not like this device. However, there are some really intriguing aspects that I'd like to talk about, like why it has a battery, what this thing does, and why I think, in a way, this might actually be the computer of the future. This is The Mind, a portable workstation from Kadas. Kadas? Not really sure. Now, you might be familiar with Kadas as they've made quite a few ARM-based single board computers, but The Mind is their first venture into the x86 space. And Mind might be a bit weird of a name, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Now, really quick, I do want to mention that this product is technically in a Kickstarter phase, and normally I wouldn't cover something that's a Kickstarter just because of the risk involved, but with Kadas, they have released a lot of computers in the past and they have experience making single board computers, so I have a bit more faith that they're going to follow through, at least with producing these. And according to their timeline, they're pretty far along in terms of production, and I believe these are actually just going to go up for sale in about a month. If you're curious about the product and the risk and the timeline and all of that stuff, they actually do have a lot of good information on their Kickstarter page, which I'll make sure I have linked in the description. Technically, this is just a single board computer with an Intel i7-1360p CPU, 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory, and a one terabyte SSD. It has very modest IO on the back with just two USB type A ports, two type C ports, and an HDMI 2.0 port. Now, other than the fact that there's no USB 4 or Thunderbolt, and even worse, one of the Type-C ports only supports USB 2, the lack of ports on the back actually isn't that big of an issue, but that's because of what's underneath. See, this isn't your average mini PC or single board computer, because this thing has MindLink. And yes, I'm going to say it like that every single time. That's a lot of fun to say, but it's actually a really impressive connector. MindLink was developed in-house by Kadas and is supposedly capable of 8 lanes of PCIe 5.0, along with USB 3.2 Gen 2, HDMI 2.1, and 10 amps of power delivery. It can also handle up to 10,000 replug cycles, which I guess technically could be one replug cycle and still be up to, but moving on. Hopefully it is a durable connector because it's probably going to get used quite a bit. See, while this works perfectly fine as a standalone PC, it's just primarily meant to be the brains, hence the mind name. The body, so to speak, comes in the form of peripherals in the mind ecosystem. Now, speaking of bodies, if yours is getting a little bit too hairy, you might want to check out the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra from the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. I'm getting good at these segues, huh? Manscaped has been innovating in the male grooming space for quite some time, and they're back at it again with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. This improves on the Lawnmower 4.0 by having an upgraded trimmer blade with longer, wider, rounder teeth that are tough on hair but gentle on your skin. Along with the built-in guard, you can use one of three combs, one of which is a fixed length and the other two are adjustable. Now the upgraded trimmer is nice, but what really makes this shine is the foil blade trimmer. Similar to their handyman, the foil blade shaver lets you get a nice smooth shave anywhere you might need it. Now, as if this dual blade system wasn't enough, you still get all the creature comforts you'd come to expect for Manscaped, like USB-C charging, a travel lock, and an upgraded LED light. Oh, and of course, it's waterproof. That way you can trim things up in the shower and then easily rinse it off after. If you want to step up your manscaping game, head on over to manscaped.com and pick yourself up the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. And you can use code HARDWAREHAVEN to get 20% off, plus free international shipping. So what are you waiting for? Trust over 9 million men who trust Manscaped and pick up a Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today. All right, back to the mind and its peripherals. For now, there's just this, the mind dock. There are plans for quite a few options later down the road, including a monitor, portable display with a built-in battery, and a VoIP device equipped with an array of microphones designed for office meetings and such. There's also a planned Mind Graphics module that will feature a 4060 Ti, but that won't be available until halfway through next year. Now that also gives you access to more I.O., including 2.5 gigabit networking, USB ports, HDMI outputs, and a USB 4 port that supports Thunderbolt 3 and 4, but I'm not really sure here what that means. I did reach out to Kadas and I'm hoping to hear back, but I'm not sure if the Thunderbolt port means that you can use the graphics module with like another laptop or mini PC, or if it means that you can use Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 devices with your Kadas mind. So 
I don't think it could be both, so I'm assuming it has to be one of the two. I will let you know though if Kodos gets back to me before I finish editing this video. Now, if that Thunderbolt support means you can use the graphics module with other computers, that's a pretty big win because you could use that graphics module with other computers and not necessarily have it locked into this mind ecosystem. So a little bit of praise there, but I'm going to rip it right back when you look at the price tag of $1,000 for a 4060 Ti. But for now, we do have this, the mind dock, and it's fairly self-explanatory. On top is the mind link, which allows the mind to dock and have access to two and a half gigabit ethernet, two HDMI 2.0 ports, two five gigabit per second USB-A ports, and a USB-C port. But sadly, that USB-C port is only for power, so still no Thunderbolt or USB 4, which is a bit disappointing. The dock has a few more ports on the front, including another five gigabit per second USB port, a combo audio jack, and an SD card reader. But it also has a volume knob and a fingerprint sensor. The volume knob is a nice touch and you can push it to mute, but the fingerprint sensor is actually pretty huge, especially considering the continued adoption of pass keys. Now, sure, you get this feature on a lot of laptops, but it's rarely something you see on desktops or even mini PCs. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking, wow, a dock, I've never seen that before. But this is actually where the mind kind of starts to shine. Remember in the intro how I mentioned a battery? Well, this thing actually has a 5.5 watt hour battery inside. Now, it's not so you can use it on the go like a laptop, but it makes it so that moving the mind from place to place is seamless. The idea is that when you disconnect the mind from power, it automatically goes into sleep mode where it can supposedly stay charged for 25 hours. Whenever you reconnect it to power, it automatically wakes up and you can pick things up right where you left off. I'll talk more about that and how the battery works a bit later on though. Now you might be wondering, how does this thing actually perform? Well, essentially exactly how I expected it to, which isn't a bad thing. In a small suite of benchmarks, it performed a bit better than my Geekcom Mini IT12 with the previous gen i7-1260p. It did draw a bit more power though from the wall, both at idle and while under load. I tested power draw both with and without the dock, but tests were done while docked and also using the balance power mode that was set in the included Windows 11 installation. For being so little, the mind was able to keep the 1360p fairly cool with essentially no thermal throttling. However, the fan noise was pretty noticeable and somewhat annoying. The mind isn't locked down to Windows, and I figured I would not only install something Linux based, but also check out how this might perform in a more home server scenario. Now, rather than overriding the Windows installation, I opted to use a different SSD to install Linux. Now, I could have dropped in another SSD alongside the internal SSD because there is this cool little slot that's mounted in the bottom of the case. You just push down on this little tab thing here, and it's magnetic and pops up so you can drop in another SSD. Now, I personally had quite a few issues when dual booting Linux and Windows with bootloader issues, and I didn't want to get into that mess, so I just decided to go ahead and take out the SSD with the Windows installation. Now, that did void my warranty because I had to take out a few screws and open up the bottom cover, but it was surprisingly easy to open up and take the SSD out. It's kind of a bummer that they void your warranty by replacing this SSD because it really isn't that hard of a repair to do. Granted, that's the only thing you're probably going to do once you're inside. Now, while I had it open, I decided to go ahead and pull out the whole motherboard, or I guess it's a single board computer, and this thing is really well built. It felt incredibly premium and I don't know, it just felt like it was really good quality. I know people won't like this, but it was almost Apple-like in the sense of just how well built and designed it seemed. And it wasn't just because <laughs> the PCB was black. I didn't have any other M.2 2230 SSDs on hand, so I quickly ordered one on Amazon so I could get it in time and dropped it in and had no issues. With the SSD in, I installed Proxmox and ran some virtual machines and containers, and there's not really much to say. Everything worked without a hitch. I didn't have any issues in the BIOS. I didn't have any issues booting into anything. This really is just a little mini PC that runs as expected, which doesn't seem like it should be a compliment, but with something that's kind of a bit niche and unique and fairly new, you know, it's a company that's never made an x86 single board computer, everything was really smooth and went off without a hitch. Like I said, I ran a few virtual machines and containers. I ran a Minecraft server. I ran Home Assistant. I had a Linux desktop that I remoted into with Moonlight, and it all worked great. The 1360p is a beast of a processor. I was really impressed with the 1260p when I had it, 
But yeah, this thing is kind of nuts. Granted, you're going to pay for it, but yeah, it's a really good processor. A lot of power. 32 gigs of RAM is it's not upgradable, but you're not really going to probably need a whole lot more than that for most things. So performance wise, it worked really well. Now let's talk about the battery thing. I was kind of hoping this might operate as a mini UPS in ways. You know, if you had a short power outage for some reason, this would at least keep running until power came back on, kind of like how a laptop would. I decided to test out a momentary loss of power while running the Minecraft server by just pulling out the USB plug and plugging it back in. And uh, yeah, Proxmox did not like that. And that's because this actually at the firmware level, I guess you could say, whenever it senses a loss of power, it'll automatically put itself into a sleep state, I guess like S3 or something like that, which is not great for something like Proxmox. However, this does work flawlessly when using a desktop like Windows. I was using this in my living room, just plugged into a USB dongle and was playing some games and doing some stuff on my living room TV. And then without telling it to go to sleep or anything, I just unplugged it, plugged it into the dock that I had set up in my dining room and picked things back up right where I left off. It was actually a lot of fun to do and I found myself doing it a whole bunch just to see if I could get it to break, but it kept working as expected, which is pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> elephant in the room time though. I imagine there's plenty of comments already typed up saying this, but yeah, you could buy a laptop. That would probably make a lot more sense for most people and in most situations. And for a similar price or even cheaper, you could get a laptop with the exact same specs. And that's even more so the case with mini PCs. Something like the 13th Gen Nook has the exact same specs, plus you get I.O. without having to have a $180 dock to plug it into. And to add insult to injury, with pretty much all of those examples, you would get USB 4 or Thunderbolt, making those much more usable with peripherals that are already on the market. Everything so far, and pretty much everything planned in the CODIS ecosystem, minus potentially the GPU module, is stuck in that ecosystem using the MindLink. And as far as I can tell, I don't think there's any plans to make the MindLink an open and usable connector by third parties. So it seems to just be proprietary, which means you're just kind of stuck with whatever they decide to or don't decide to make. I kind of wish they would have found a way to go with PCIe here. That would have at least opened up options for what you could maybe do with this down the road and maybe incentivize companies to make third party products for this because it would be using a, a standardized connector that they're already familiar with. But I guess it's probably an issue of plug cycles because PCIe is not meant to be constantly plugged in and out. So I don't really know the right solution here. Thunderbolt and USB 4 is a great connector, but it does have limitations and to be fair, the MindLink connector does surpass a lot of the limitations of Thunderbolt and USB 4. The connector is actually really impressive, and the idea isn't bad at all. I actually kind of like it. The idea of having a module here that handles all of your compute that gets plugged into uh, the peripherals is actually kind of cool and is actually pretty similar to what Framework is doing. And I'm a huge fan of Framework. Now, this isn't just a motherboard you can pop into a laptop, but it still has this modular approach of not necessarily, you know, if, if this dies, you don't lose your whole PC, you don't lose your whole whatever. I could see these actually being somewhat popular in corporate environments where, you know, you could just buy a thousand of these and then just, you know, if you have certain employees that need more compute power or a GPU power, you know, you just give them the little GPU dock that goes on there. And then if you have certain employees that do a lot of other things or need certain IO, you could just have a variety of peripherals and docks that these just sort of go in. And the, and the idea of being able to just take your computer wherever you go is pretty cool. However, I do think there's a really good chance that a lot of the, the benefits of that could also be achieved with things that already exist, like VDI or network attached storage or just a laptop. Now, I don't know if this is possible, but I think it would be really cool if, for example, on like this dock, the MindLink Mind connector was the male side on the top, but the female connector on the bottom. That way you could essentially daisy chain devices together. So, you know, you have your CPU, RAM, motherboard, whatever, and then you put that on top of, you know, let's say you need some 10 gig networking, you slot that on your 10 gig networking module or just a module that has, you know, your USB ports and 10 gig networking or whatever you need. And then you go buy a graphics card that, you know, has the same connector and then you just slot that underneath and you kind of have your little stack of modular PC components versus putting them all in a case. I think that's actually kind of cool and could serve a purpose, especially in the future when our computers keep getting smaller and smaller, because realistically for most people, 
you don't need more than something like this. 12 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, most people aren't going to need anything more than this. Granted, this does cost a lot of money, so let's talk about the value proposition here. I'm going to be ignoring early bird pricing with the Kickstarter because, yeah, let's talk about the actual prices of these. And I believe this runs right around $1,000. In just terms of this being a computer, that is really not a good value, especially with the lack of things like USB 4. Now, they do make a cheaper version of this that has an i5, I believe it's the 1340p or something like that, and 16 gigabytes of DDR5, but I still think that comes in at around $700, and realistically, if you're just looking for a simple computer, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, the dock is $180, and like I said, doesn't even include a USB-C port that supports data, which is kind of a bummer. So unless this just really makes sense for what you do, or you just love the form factor, and you're willing to take a gamble on how well Kottas follows through with this, I would hold off. However, I am really curious to see where this goes, especially the MindLink connector. I think that's a genuinely interesting idea, and could be the future of how we put together computer components. I genuinely would love to see this connector take off and see third parties develop a much larger ecosystem for it. That being said, if it doesn't, that's not going to keep me from telling people to never buy these. I'll be following it though, and if there's any major developments down the road, I'll make sure and follow up on it. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it, maybe check out this one here. But that's about it for now, so as always, thank you guys so much for watching, stay curious, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.